everybody, it's Dr. Rick. Uh, it's early Monday. I am sitting here preparing to get the work day. Well, I've already gotten it started, but I took a quick break because I want to come talk to you guys about the latest thing that's popping right now, the riverboat brawl, uh, which happened, I think, in Montgomery, uh, Alabama. Um, and I want to talk about it somewhat from a comedic uh, perspective, not so much with me being funny, but just some of the funny things I picked up from it. Uh, but I'm taking it very seriously, as I do. Uh, but I laugh and joke and play. Uh, one of the things Mary used to always say is that they knew how silly and crazy you were. They wouldn't believe it. Um, I'm a clown. I'm just about my business when it's time to be about my business. And you guys get to see me in that element. Uh, my friends, no. Uh, don't get him started. Uh, I'm real. I'm still real laid back in the environment. If you don't know me, you see me. You think I'm in the cut. Uh, but the cats that know me uh, know I can go with the best of them. But look, for those who are under a rock somewhere, right? And I'm gonna be back to talk about this Jamie Foxx thing. Probably gonna get me kicked off of YouTube, but oh, oh well. I'm gonna come back and talk about this Jamie Foxx thing. Um, but. Um, this brawl, you know, and I heard about it, and you know, I wasn't fast to go see it because, you know, another fight video, uh, more violence, and everything that's going on in my life right now, it's about managing my energy, but you can't fight the battles I fight and not encounter things that shake, shake you at times, it's just what it is. Uh, you know, and coming off of this whole shooting thing, uh, I definitely didn't want to see violence. But then again, uh, it was unavoidable. I'm going to check my uh, Twitter or whatever it's called now uh, account. Uh, and for most people who don't realize it, I don't actually spend a whole lot of time on in independently, individually on all these different platforms. I post from what's known as a... Um, CMS, content management system that allows me to post to almost all of this and I stream from uh, one streaming outlet. So whenever I'm live, I'm streaming from an outlet that allows me to stream to multiple platforms at one time. Um, so while I do go to each one to check certain things that I can't check anywhere else, I'm not on there as much as it may seem. Uh, but it's the, uh, it's it's necessary to do business. But anyway, it was there. So let's talk about this for a second. Security guard asked a couple of white dudes to move their boat. Now it's been said uh, by Tyreek uh, and some others, uh, Omar Epps, and some others that come on. They have classified the guys as white supremacists. I couldn't get the sound on the video, so I had I couldn't hear anything said, so I can't classify it. And um, while I definitely uh, have respect and trust for how things are reported by certain people, uh, I am careful now of how I uh, report. I want to be as accurate as I possibly can. Um, some people, you know, just are going to automatically ap apply the moniker white supremacist to almost any white person that does something stupid. Um, I define white supremacy, number one, as a system. There are white people within that system that help to carry it out. Uh, I define bigotry different. Uh, but I also define white supremacy as white people who think they're simply better than blacks because they're white. Now, two totally different functions in this whole racial caste system, and I won't get into that now. But because I didn't hear anything, I just know there were white stupid people that felt like they had a right to hit a white guy. So you can almost draw a line if you want to 
or who, who why they thought they could and you come to the conclusion of the white supremacy so we're going we're going to live with it but anyway do tell them to the boat they decide that he deserves a whooping or we would say 50, 60, 100 years ago a lashing and they made the mistake of hitting him and he fired back and here they come out of the woodwork six or seven of them maybe more and they jump him and there are these guys that have got labels now here comes the first responder we can't remember we cannot dismiss the importance of the first responder because he triggered the the tribe mentality so to speak he didn't wait for others to say hey y'all gonna go help he showed up outnumbered and he came in and he got in the mix of it right around this time happens you look in the frame and there's little little dude swimming across the river coming over to the bank i don't know where he was swimming from but he was swimming in the river he's coming up on the bank he swam to come to the aid of a black man another black man beautiful uh, we're just gonna call him Aquaman. He, cause he showed up, uh, and then the next thing you know, here they come, and so there, there's this thing, and they came, they brought the smoke, and they weren't trying to hit. You couldn't calm them down. It wasn't no backing off, and uh, you know, and uh, they, they, they were equal opportunity. They were passing out ass whippings with equal opportunity because uh, those white women that were running up there trying to get in it, and see, that's another thing that they're good at. They'll come steal licks using their white, uh, uh, I don't even want to use the term femininity, um, but that using that as an, an excuse to get in some licks. They weren't getting that pass in this video. They were catching them. And then there's Pops. Pops with the folded chair. Pops obviously was upset that he never made professional wrestling because he took all his frustrations out and it didn't matter again equal opportunity slanging it slanging that thing and he was hitting them all he was taking all comers uh he wasn't playing around and i think the thing that was funniest to me was how many cops were there and couldn't get it under control and didn't know who to grab uh obviously uh people were arrested on both sides from what i can tell um, and there are a lot of people, including myself, that are saying this is probably more symbolic for blacks than it is any real true progress. But I don't want to squander or malign or marginalize what I saw. What I saw is we're not taking this crap anymore. You, we we, we ready to line it up. Right now, last man standing wins. And generally speaking, hand to hand, if they're not martial, you know, special trained, whether whether special forces, martial arts, uh, MMA, just hand to hand, we've been fighting longer. We've been fighting harder. We in the mix. We had to grow up defending ourselves, and naturally more physically impact. Just we 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 gonna win that nine times out of ten. Because that's not where they get down. They've never had to fight to survive. The vast majority of them. You know. And I saw that. I saw that. And to me that meant a lot. That meant something to me. That was like something that you mark down. That you take. Uh, but I also understand why some of my brothers in, 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 the, in this war uh, for black empowerment are uh, referring to it as being simply symbolic. I don't see it as being simply symbolic. I do see it as a symbolic uh, impression, but I also see the reality of it because there's some people waking up with some bruises this morning. That's more than symbolic. Uh, some people waking up uh, needing to be bonded out. Uh, that's more than symbolic. Uh, it has some impact. It, it, it sends a statement. It also awakens the mind and, 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 and challenges the emotions so it's definitely more than just symbolic but I get it here's why and this is where it gets a little bit more serious here's why 
may say that it is symbolic and that you know it that needs to be more is we we ready to show up, we're ready to ride, we're ready to go in a physical confrontation. It's instinctive in us now. We are ready for that. We are prepared for that. What I want to see is us be ready to push back against the oppression we're experiencing in uh, education, the, the miseducation of our children, the gentrification of our neighborhood. And I don't, I don't mean simply in showing up and being uh, ready to throw hands. I mean in coming together and using our minds to challenge the system. Because see, while uh, those white people that decided it was a good idea to hit that dude who was simply doing his job found out the hard way that that ain't what's up, they're not the ones pulling the strings that are messing with you, that are engineering poverty in the black community, that is behind mass incarceration and miseducation and gentrification and, 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 and other discriminatory and uh, rep uh, oppressive tactics. They're not the ones pulling the strings, and the ones that are pulling the strings you can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe and hand-to-hand -hand with because you're not in their proximity. You can't get close to them then. That means you need to be able to, uh, from a strategic perspective, create agendas and plans to do that. But I don't want to take away from this. This is more than just feel a feeling of satisfaction. I think that while they're going to suppress what's funny is, if it was a fight with us fighting us, it would be more vile than it is. It's gone viral simply because we've made it go viral. We've made it go viral. Black Twitter, Black Instagram uh, has made it go viral. Um, but if it would have been us fighting us, it would have been everywhere. And it would have been a different narrative. But because we can literally, in the video, see the aggression of whites unprovoked um, and we can see the rapid and almost organized response by blacks it was almost like it was synced every time there was a need for more we showed up um, and black men defending black men that gave me chills um, I think that you know you've heard me talk about that so much that even when we're not harming each other we're, com we're competing with, with each other and to see us stand side by side and defend a brother again who was simply doing his job all he did was ask them to move their boat and I guess they felt like because he was black, or maybe just because he, he, they didn't want to listen, but you got to assume that that wouldn't have been the same response if he'd have been a white man asking them to move the boat. And, 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 that, and that's the thing, whether it's in Alabama or somewhere in the Midwest or the Northeast, you still see white people who do not want to respond to blacks in authority. Um, while it's more pronounced in the South, in certain areas, um, it happens all over the place. Uh, the idea that you think you can tell me what to do is a problem. And, you know, you got to understand that there are people alive right now who were alive when Emmett Till was killed. When black men could be lynched for something as simple as looking a white man in the eye, or in Emmett's case, allegedly whistling at a white woman.
So when you see what you're seeing, you're seeing the sons of elders and ancestors who have heard stories. And in many instances have witnessed mishandled, being mishandled, being mistreated, being unduly stopped and frisked and searched and harassed by police uh, with no probable cause, being arrested for doing nothing, uh, being turned down for jobs that they're overly qualified for, and on down the line. And here it, here it played out that not today. Uh, I think this happened on Friday, if I'm not mistaken, and it was a not today Friday. This is, you know, something that I think that we learn from. Um, we take some joy, and you know, I'm not that. You know, it's try to be down this way, and I'm not that person, man. I, I'm gonna laugh about this today at the cigar shop, you know. Uh, and talk about it, but I'm also a person that sees bigger pictures. One of the reasons why I've experienced the level of success that I've experienced is because I'm able to see bigger pictures. I'm able to understand that while this represents something and it shouldn't be pushed to the side, I'm not with my brothers who are dismissing it as just being symbolic. I think some symbols, number one, have their place. Symbols are supposed to be a representation of something greater. And I think it was. But I also think it was more than that. I think it was an execution of an idea. Not anymore. And I think that needs to become the battle cry. Not anymore. Not today. And I think that when we start thinking that way, but not just in a physical confrontation, which is important. It's the first level of... Uh, I'm a problem that black men need to start sending is I will physically give you the business. It's early in the morning. I'm trying my best to keep my tongue and behave myself. Y'all know that I can go there sometime. I'm trying. I'm trying. Um, and the thing is I think that anyone who knows me knows me well enough to know that I'm not a condoner of violence. I stopped watching the police shooting videos. I stopped watching all that stuff because I don't want to become so desensitized to it that it doesn't have an impact, if it, that it doesn't make me feel anything or, you know, just I want the humanity that remains to stay. And so I, I'm not a condoner of senseless violence, but I am a supporter of necessary physical force to defend one to defend one's family rights, brothering and connectivity, and in this case, brotherhood. Absolutely. Um, the one thing that anybody who grew up with me will tell you is I didn't start stuff. Still don't start stuff now. But my grandfather, well, actually great-grandfather, taught me, you don't start it, but you better finish it. And in the cases with the time I got in trouble in school for fighting, my grandfather was, who started it? And he wasn't talking to me, he was talking to who passed the first lick, who made the first aggressive move. If it wasn't me, that was one. I'm, I'm okay. Second was, how did you finish? Hmm. Living in, living me. I finished. So that's my thing, and I think that we as men have a responsibility to be willing to defend the village, to defend the community, to defend our homes, to defend our children, to defend our women. And I think that uh, what I saw in that video was simply black men responding to a black man in danger. You know, they were running up on him like he was some prowler with a gun that had just killed somebody and they were coming to hold him. For, they literally were going to hurt him. Um, <laughs> and the one thing.
thing I can tell you is just little things that pop up, you know, growing up black. They had him down and they jumping on him. And when his rescue came, he got up. All I could think about is, yep, he's definitely black because anybody that knows a black person ain't jack on earth or sea or air going to stop you from getting your leg back. I mean, you gonna get your leg back, and he went and got his leg back, and that, that's you know that was like, yep, he grew up in the hood. You, you, you don't let somebody get you and then you. I'm gonna get my leg back, and you know you get whooping sometimes trying to get that leg back. But here's the thing. Seriously, uh, we have a responsibility to advance ourselves. I think that standing up for one another is a big move. So I'm not going to be dismissive of it. I'm not going to push it to the side. I'm definitely not going to join the few of us that are saying, look at that go black. No. When you, sometimes you write checks and your ass is not able to cash it. That's what happened that day. Sometimes you sit up and you, 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 you call for smoke and you get it. Sometimes you sit up and you go into something thinking you have an upper hand and realize you don't. The idea that people are going to try to make it as if we did something wrong, and I say we because I think they are universally representing uh, blacks in our struggle uh, to be treated equally and to be respected. Um, and be sometimes before respect can be established, you need to make them fear you. Uh, fear and respect aren't the same thing. I teach my young kids that I work with that. But sometimes a person will have such disdain and willingness to harm you that until they have a situation where they know better, will they be put in a position to respect why you are who you are. And I think that's something that we need to understand and be willing to execute. And I saw that in that video. So that's that. I just had to sort of, you know, give my little two cents on what happened. And hopefully um, we'll take it to the next level. Hopefully we'll start looking at it on a social, strategic, uh, financial um, and political level so that we can really truly advance uh, and finally uh, we are still extending this uh, fundraising push if you believe in the work that we've done for the past 30 years and uh, the work that I've done with over 80,000 hours of research and program development program implementation uh, dissemination of information for the purpose of education and empowerment consistently and constantly we need your support look in the description box of wherever you're watching this video and give the links will be there on that note uh, we're pushing for uh, a target of 10,000 uh, I can tell you we came nowhere close I don't think we hit three but anyway 300 so uh, it is what it is but we're going to keep going um, and I'm going to call it like I call it. Uh, I'm not, again, you've heard me say this, so I'm not here to make friends. I'm not here. The friends I make will be genuine friends because they will respect me for who I am and what I stand for. I'm not here to make friends. I'm not here to be popular. I don't went through the whole popular thing. It ain't all it's cut out to be. Um, I'm here to educate and empower by speaking truth to power. And what I do often rubs people because I don't talk for the sake of satiating anyone. I talk for the sake of presenting truth for the sake, for the purpose of empowerment. And sometimes it just doesn't play well and I'm okay with that. But that's my take on it. So again, I'm about to get out of here. I just had to stop by and give you that 
on that note, I'm out. Uh, again, support our work, and I'll see you soon. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.